the next important concept of C sharp are arrays and control flow using for loops and if statements. To put it in the context of our game, I want to make our map look more interesting by making the shadows of the clouds constantly move from left to right. So we need to control a group of objects and all of them will have the same behavior. In our project, in the hierarchy, you will find this clouds game object and if you expand it using this arrow, you will see that it has child objects representing each separate cloud shadow and you can see them in the scene view. To make all of those move, we are going to create a single script called clouds manager. So let's go to our project tab scripts, right click here, create a new C sharp script. Let's call it maybe clouds. And with capital C clouds, capital C controller. And this is the convention for calling scripts with the capital case letter at the start. So let's create this script and open it up in Visual Studio. To move our clouds, we are going to use the transform component, which we have already explored. We know that it contains position, rotation and scale of an object. And since our clouds will not collide with anything, we can basically use transform.position to move our clouds around the map without using the physics engine. Back in our script, we already know that to get one cloud object, we can simply create a private transform because that's what we want to access and we can call this underscore cloud. Now this gives us a reference to a single transform of our cloud, but we have multiple clouds and we need to store multiple transform references. So how do we go about it? If you recall our explanation that a variable representing an object is like a map, now imagine that we can create a collection of slots where each one at the start is null, so an empty map, and each can be connected to a transform of our cloud object. If we do that, we could go through this list or a, an array or a, basically a collection, and unless the reference is not null, we could make it move using the transform object referenced by our collection. Just as with variable types, collections also have types and one of the commonly used is called an array. And in the description you can read, you can store multiple variables of the same type in an array data structure. And it is declared by typing the type, so our transform, with square brackets and giving the array a name. In our code we already have this private transform underscore clouds variable, and to turn it into an array we can just add square brackets after the type of the variable that we have typed here. Let's just add serialize field uh, attribute above it and let's save our script and let's see how it looks like in Unity. Let's select our clouds controller script from our project tab and let's drag it into the clouds object or onto it. And we should see now that we have this script in the inspector and we have this clouds array. If we expand it, it is list is empty. Actually, it is array, but basically what we can do is give it a uh, length. So for example, three, press enter. And now we have three slots to which we can actually assign our clouds. So one, two, three. Now we are missing three more. So we are going to increase the length or the size of it to be six, press enter and three more appears. So we are going to assign just clouds four, cloud five and cloud six here. And now we have all the references to all the clouds in our scene using this array. Now, I just want to point out that they are called element zero, one, two, three, four, five. And those are indices by which we can, or through which we can access each of those transforms. Now again, Unity behind the scenes has already called for us a new keyword and instantiated this array because arrays are also objects, not primitive types. But let me show you how we can create a new array through code. So back in our script, we have this transform array called underscore clouds. And what we could do to instantiate it is to call equal new and we are going to retype transform the square brackets and we are going to put here the size in our case we have uh, we needed six spaces so we are going to put here six back in the documentation for the array if i slide a bit down you will see that we can declare a single dimension array by calling int so this is integer array array one equals new int with five 
in between those uh, square brackets and this is array of five integers. Now here we can declare the array by putting directly in the values that we want to put and here we have one, two, three, four, five, six spaces. So this is an array of six slots filled in with those numbers, those integers. Well, we have an array of transform objects, so what will be in each slot? Well, basically it will look like this. It will be an array of null values and there will be one, two, three, four, five, six of those. Okay, we can create an array through the script, but how do we populate it? In Unity we have just dragged the transform objects of the cloud, of each cloud, into our array in the inspector. But how do we do that in our code? Well, in C Sharp, we can access an element or a slot of an array by typing in the, for example, the start method underscore clouds. And we can type in between the brackets, the uh, square brackets zero. And this will correspond to the zeroth index. So the first element of the array, because uh, the indices of the array starts with zero and ends with the length minus one so we have the length of six so the last element will be uh, will have the index of five so in that case if we create another serialize field and we are going to create a private transform and we are going to call this underscore cloud one what we could do is now take this and put it inside the clouds in the index zero so in this first slot by calling equals underscore cloud one Okay, let's save the script, let's go back to Unity. Now we have already populated our array with the clouds, so the last one is cloud 6. So let's drag cloud 6 to our cloud 1 field, and let's press play. Okay, and when your game runs, you should see that now element 0 contains cloud 6, which is represented above, and this is what we have assigned through our code. Now, you have to remember about arrays that the indices starts with 0, so first element has index zero, last element has the index of length of the array minus one. And this is a common place where we make bugs and errors, so it is most important to remember those indices. Okay, back in our code, let's remove this transform cloud one because we do not need it, and we do not need to access or assign it in the start method. Let's instead do something else. Let's try printing what is stored in our index zero, for example. And to do that, we will use something called debug.log, and this logs a message to the Unity console. So in our script, let's go to our start method and let's type here debug inside the code block of our start method, debug with capital D dot. We are going to access log method, and we are going to add parentheses because here is where we pass the data. And we are going to pass here the quotation marks, so we are going to create a string variable, cloud, at index zero, and we are going to add space, go outside of those uh, quotation marks, we are going to add plus, and we are going to type underscore clouds, and we are going to type square brackets and index zero. Okay, so now we are going to basically print this string message and print whatever here is in the index zero of our array as a string value. So we are converting this object transform to a string format. We are going to copy this line of code, Control C. We are going to add a new uh, line of code below, Control V to uh, paste it. We are going to add index one, and we are going to access index one. Let's save this and let's go back to Unity. Make sure to stop your project, and now we are going to select the index one, click this cog icon in the inspector, and we are going to select none. So now if we press play, let's look what happens. In the console at the bottom, we are going to see that the cloud at index zero is cloud underscore one. So this is the name in the hierarchy of our cloud one. But cloud at index one is equal to null or is null based on our printout. And if we select our clouds object in the hierarchy, we can see that element one is not assigned, it is none. So in our code, it will be represented as null. Okay, let's stop our game and let's reassign our cloud underscore two as the first element of our array. Let's go back to our script because there is one more thing that I want to show you. If we want to debug.log the last element of our array, but we do not know how long it is, what we could type is underscore clouds and we are going to type in between those square brackets underscore clouds dot and we are going to access the parameter length and we are going to add minus one 
and this will represent the last element of our array. So we are going to also copy this and we are going to delete the cloud at index one because we do not know which index it is. We're going to add plus here. We're going to uh, add space and we are going to paste control V clouds.length and we are going to just use this. And next we are going to add to it. The, so this will turn the length representation. So the int value to a string plus clouds. So the representation of the transform at the last position at, in the last slot of our clouds to the string value as well. Now what we can do is copy this because there is an easier way to access it. We can paste this line of code and we can just print the same th thing here, but plus clouds and in the, between those square brackets, we can add the carrot symbol. So uh, this, and we can type one. And this will basically represent this statement, but it is much shorter. Let's save our script and let's go back to Unity. Okay, let's just press play. And in the console, you should see the first statement in the same cloud at index zero is cloud underscore one and cloud at index six. I forgot to add space here is cloud underscore six. And the second statement is exactly the same using our card symbol and one. We have access to the last element of our array. I hope it makes sense because those are the basics of working with arrays or collections in C sharp. Now data structures are a big topic. So there are other collections like lists that we also use in C sharp. But for now, this should be enough to get you started with working with collections in C sharp. Let's go to our code and let's make our clouds move using our new collection, our new array of transforms back in our script. Let me delete the content of the start method. We do not need those debug.logs and clear the explanation of the of the array. I'm going to just add here another serialized field. And this will be private float underscore speed. And let's set it to be equal to one or 1.0 F. And remember to add the semicolon at the end. This will be the speed of the movement of our clouds. Okay. Now we could go to our update method and start using this array by calling underscore clouds with index zero and we could access the position and do something with this position. But that's not how we want to work with our arrays. The main problem with this approach is that we may not know how many objects do we have at a specific time in our array. Obviously there is a limit to it because we give it a size. But the idea here is with the collections that we are not certain how many of the objects are not null or null. So we are going to use for loop to loop through our collection. So for loop is an iteration statement. So iteration statements repeatedly executes a statement or a block of statements. So basically a block of lines of code. And for statement is defined like this. We can see that we are using for keyword and have parentheses like in a method. In between those, we define the data for our for loop. So int i equals zero, this will be our index. We create a new int variable. Now we assign it to zero because zero is a first uh, slot in an, any collection, basically. Next, we get a condition when we should exit this for loop. So the condition is the, when i is greater or equal to three, we are going to exit. As long as i is less than three, we are going to continue performing this code. So we are going to console write we're going to log to our console uh, the value of this i. So first will be zero, here it is. And next uh, we are going to use i++, this is the increment. So we are going to add one each time the loop runs. So i equals zero and we add one, we are going to get one. One is less than three, we are going to print one. And next we are going to print two. And then i will become three. And three isn't less than three, so we are going to exit this loop. So the printout from this will be 0, 1, 2, and then the loop exits. Okay, I know it is a lot. So let's go to our script and implement it on our own. So you get a field for how to create a for loop based on an array. In our script, let's go to our update method because here is where we usually move things. And we are going to create for, and we are going to, this is the keyword, open parenthesis, and we need to add curly braces so this is the code block for our for loop. Now in between those uh, parentheses, we need to add the first uh, statement of an index. So int i equals zero and semicolon. So this defines the starting point of our array. We will start at the position zero of our clouds array. 
Right now, we haven't really connected this direct clause array. So we need to finish writing this. We need to have a condition. So when i is less, and what is the length of our array? The last index, as I have mentioned, is the length minus one. So we are going to just add here i is less than underscore clouds dot length because the last index is length minus one. So the length, uh, the index length doesn't exist, so we can't really access it. That's why we use it as a condition to exit this for loop. Lastly, we need to add a, a semicolon and we are going to add i plus plus, which basically just means i equals i plus one. We could also use i minus minus, which would be i equals i minus one and it would go backwards but this is not the point of this loop we want to use this plus plus so we want to be adding to uh, i one so zero plus one equals one and then one plus one equals two and so on the name of the variable so i is just a common practice it is arbitrary you can give it any name so this is called an index of our for loop you can give it any name like index or bob doesn't really matter but we commonly use i to uh, indicate that this is an index of a for loop. We also have seen this uh, less than operator for the first time. So uh, we have comparison operators that allows us to compare to objects. So less than, greater than, less or equal or greater or equal. And basically the idea is that we can check if seven is less than 5.1 and the output is a bool value false or bool value of truth like if zero is less than 5.1, we're going to get true. You probably already know those comparison operators from your math class. The basic idea is that we need to have an exit condition to stop our for loop and continue with the code that we have defined below the for loop in our block of code. The important part is that this returns a bool flag, which allows us uh, or the compiler to simply compare. If this is false, we're going to exit the for loop. If this is true, we're going to continue performing the code inside our code block. And we're going to use the increment operator to continue looping through whatever we want to loop. Let's just quickly add our movement code. All we need to do is call our underscore clouds array and square brackets. And now what we want to do here is pass the i index. So we are going to loop through one, two, three, four, five, and so on until we reach the clouds dot length minus one and the loop will stop so we are going to loop through each uh, slot of our array so this we're going to call position because basically what we get here is a transform object reference so we can access this its position using the dot uh, operator and we are going to set it to be equal underscore clouds with the uh, square brackets and i dot position and we are going to uh, add to it plus vector three dot right because we want to move to the right and we are going to multiply this obviously by the time dot delta time so time with capital t dot delta time with a smaller d and capital t and add semicolon at the end so what this code will do is use the same position and add to it the vector three dot right multiplied by time dot delta time and obviously I forgot about our speed, so multiplied by underscore speed. And now this will be the code that will move our clouds. Well, technically it will teleport the cloud by increments, by small increments every frame, but the point here is that it will not work with colli collisions, but we do not need collisions here, so we are good to go. Okay, let's save our script, let's go back to Unity. Make sure that you have stopped your game. We can see that the clouds array is filled if we select our clouds object and take a look at the inspector the speed is one so now if we press play you should now see that our clouds are being moved and if we select in the inspector in the hierarchy clouds and then in the inspector set the speed to two we can control how fast they are moving the only problem is that now these clouds are keep moving to the right and we are no longer seeing them in our game still we have made some great progress with our game in the next video we are going to work on fixing this issue by adding if statement to our code to control the flow of our code. Okay, see you in the next video.